Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the fifth uh, journal club from VCMI. Uh, the, the presentation from today is, uh, will be conducted by uh, Hugo Oliveira, that is a PhD student, with the title uh, Unifying Vision and Language Tasks via Text Generation. Okay, Hugo, you can, can start. Uh, uh, thanks, Albert. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, today I'm going to briefly present um, a work that tries to unify vision with language via text generation. It's based on the work of uh, Jamie Cho. It's a recent work. There are others uh, that also, let's say, address uh, the same topics or at least uh, the same concepts. Uh, but uh, I find this because uh, I think it's a little bit integrating. There are some concepts I'm going to not discuss in detail. For example, transform. I think it's more important to have a dedicate the session to this. But uh, just in brief contextualization, um, of course, uh, normally the research of visual question answering, right? Uh, we can have uh, many genre of answers. Uh, sometimes free form or open-ended questions that uh, when the answers can be phrases or words or even complete sentence, right? Often um, object counting, for example, how many instances of this object are in a scene, for example. Um, multiple choice questions, for example, you have uh, a set of uh, candidate uh, answers and you want to rank the highest. Uh, and binary questions, for example, if uh, an object is in a scene or not. Uh, for example, these are, let's say, the most common for tasks, or at least for concepts regarding visual question answering. And uh, for example, uh, there are many authors, but for example, this is a, from a paper of a survey, this image, we see that uh, in these four concepts, we see that uh, often the, the different the architecture employed, right? For example, yes or no problem, we have the, the visual concepts, the text the question, the, the, the encoding, right? Both for image and for text, and to do an element-wise multiplication and the output uh, if the question is true or false. Uh, object counting, also in a different architecture, we need to, for example, um, many objects are in the scene of this particular instance. Uh, we need to identify the instance on the text in the individual concept and then counting. Of course, there are other ways more simpler to do this. For example, if you use a pretrained viol uh, or something, you can subset uh, uh, the classes to those who we want, but uh, we don't leverage this uh, as a language model. We just subset, right? Uh, multiple choice, we rank the highest question and open answer questions, you have a knowledge base, you try to identify what is the question in the semantic meaning in the image and output a, te a text response uh, on this. So, uh, of course, uh, data sets, right? It's important just to briefly contextualize what are the data sets around this. Um, there are many that addresses these tasks of visual question answering. Uh, Coco question answering, visual question answering, visual genome, clever. Here, for example, I have some examples uh, of uh, visual genome. For example, we have here a, a girl with a racket tennis ball, uh, tennis. And uh, here you have the description of the, the instance, or in this case, the objects, and it's the related position. For example, the girl is in front of the cone. Right, you see the cone, right? And of course, you have the attributes of this, each of these objects, for example, color, weight, et cetera, perhaps. Something that can be uh, described from the image, such as uh, uh, attributes uh, in a resemble to uh, attributes of a class, right? Uh, and you have from visual question answering, uh, where it's shy sitting, here in the arms, fridge, and so on. Umbrella, upside down, yes or no. You see many different tasks addresses in, in the same data set in a more, let's say, uh, preliminary data set from Clever from Stanford um, that uh, tries to establish relations among objects, for example, equal number of large rings in metal spheres. This is not a trivial task to be performed by, by models, right? Um, of course, metrics, we need to 
have a certain degree of what are the metrics uh, laying around in these tasks. Uh, UN Palmer basically is a quasi logic that calculates um, similarity between two sentences. Uh, you can do this as a direct cyclic graph, uh, but mainly they has some drawbacks um, that uh, it works for single uh, single phrases or single short, uh, single word answers, um, and not very robust to um, to um, complete sentences. And uh, also we have a blue uh, means of bilingual evaluation under study. Uh, it basically counts matching and grams uh, to the candidate translation and to the text reference. So basically, this matrix comes from text uh, translation initially, then you can employ in many, in many tasks. Uh, and uh, there is a sub brief penalty on this uh, regarding, for example, you cannot put uh, a cloud of word sentences and some of them may be there, so you want to penalize this. Um, but the limitation is that uh, it's also based on very text, simplistic text string matches, right? It, it doesn't take to, into account the, the ordering, right? This is important in a text, right? Um, and this uh, concept is uh, a little bit addressed with the Meteor, that means metric for evaluation translation with some explicit ordering. So we see here this problem be, being addressed. Uh, basically, it computes on two components. Uh, the first uh, calcute, cal computes the, um, the scores of uh, precision recall for all unigrams, basically to, to have an harmonic mean of precision and recall. Uh, then it takes to account into larger matches, uh, given a, a line and penalty. So uh, the position of the, the sentences, for example, regarding, for example, the English to, to German, uh, you see that the, the subjects, uh, name, uh, subjects, verbs, etc., they don't rely on the same positions regarding the target and the, the reference text. But um, you want to have a they have a particular alignment regarding the words they are predecessed and followed. Um, basically, by trying to uh, align the chunks of the unigrams on this uh, on the uh, transitions or positions in the translation, um, and of course, BERT uh, transformers. Right, this uh, risk nowadays is becoming unavoidable in terms of the fact that um, all the works, at least the most recent, they really rely on attention, right? Uh, and transformers is, let's say, the, the main architecture. So basically to distinguish between T5 and BERT, this work basically is supported by T5. It also has BERT, BERT not BERT. But uh, T5 stands for text to text transformer. It perform, tries to rephrase all the NLP tasks uh, in an unified test-to-test -test format. We see here some kind of uh, glimpse what uh, is the objective of uh, T5 uh, with outputs and inputs and outputs being only strings. Uh, this makes it suitable for uh, addressing multiple tasks in a single model. Uh, it's stated and it's uh, as a kind of uh, uh, related uh, to, but uh, that uh, using the full encoder and decoder sometimes is better. That depends the task. For example, BERT, uh, uh, most of the architectures in BERT, um, they skip or they, they neglect the decoder. They use the encoder and they uh, try and uh, put uh, some layers and some uh, softmax uh, to a new objective, for example, sentiment analysis or text classification and so on. So basically you can use pre-trained backgrounds such as BERT and others and uh, train these two different objectives. Uh, but of course you need to specify what are these objectives. Um, uh, regarding transformers, uh, the, as I say, perhaps we should discuss this in more detail with a notebook in a later, you know, uh, next opportunity uh, with the mathematical formulations of this because I think it's very relevant. But it basically, it's a encoder, uh, a stack of in, 
of uh, encoders uh, formed by a stack of decoders. Uh, they are independent, they don't share weights. Uh, each input of the encoder follows a self-attention uh, layer that encodes other words. Um, basically, we have on the bottom the embeddings. We're going to discuss what are the embeddings, uh, but basically it's a vector representation of words that tries to establish relation, relations of distances among words. For example, um, animal and cat may be a close relation when compared, for example, animal and car, for example. Um, and this kind of notion are in the embeddings. Um, basically, the object of transformers is to, to focus with the self-attention and all the other mechanisms, is to see, for example, is a man jumping over a car, for example, the, uh, over, uh, what are the, the relations, right? Is jumping over what? A car? Ooh, the person. Um, but basically, it's formed by the, the say, the self-attention is uh, the query vector, the, the key vector and value vector, the, of the five steps, six steps, I can compute this kind of um, self-attention. Uh, basically, we, uh, we compute the self-attention for the three vectors, uh, and then we calculate the score, right? Uh, for example, uh, basically the score determines how much focus uh, on other parts of this input sentence uh, is given as we encode this particular sentence. Uh, then the process of normalization and then the, the sum of the weights. Um, and then we have the concept, it's here, multi-head attention, that uh, normally when using just one head, it's very limited in terms of text because uh, sometimes it tends to focus by it on its own word. Um, and using multi multi head attentions, uh, we give the models the ability to uh, to gather contributions from other words to the mean of this word. So basically, uh, many to one uh, or one to many in terms of relations. And then we have, uh, of course, this is important the positional encodings uh, often. Is not described, but this is basically tries to measure the distance among the words. Uh, also, it's very common to see this in time series and many others, because uh, since we decompose this sentence in, into word embeddings, we can lose the, the relative positions of each one of them. And uh, with the position we call it, we can recover this. And then, of course, the residuals, the other side, and the softmax layer. But uh, as I said, perhaps uh, more detailed discussion on transformers uh, will be useful on this. So let's go to the paper itself. Uh, as you organize this, I follow you with this organization with some discussions and introductions of concepts. Uh, but uh, as I say, mostly the most uh, visual language models, at least many tasks, I, I focus only on single task. Uh, and they require a specific architecture and some specific objectives, uh, right? Uh, of course, they can be based on BERT uh, as a with encoder, but uh, then we change all the things uh, to output uh, what you want. For example, three examples, multi-level answering for visual question, vision score, and language decoder, for example, to have a kind of uh, image capturing, right? Um, by meaning so unifying vision and language, be it generating labels in the text. We can le leverage pretended models. Of course, T5 is, is trained on uh, colossal corpus, right? It's basically trained in the same way as, uh, as BERT of uh, masking, but uh, there are some particularities. Uh, perhaps we can discuss this in another opportunity, but the objective is almost the same, right? Um, and uh, we extend, or this uh, the concept is to extend this, uh, um, this generation uh, to visual understanding. Um, of course, each downstream task, we're gonna see what this downstream task can be addressed with the same language head, this is important. Um, by, let's say, kind of fundamental aspects is that uh, which, the objective, at least, is try to tackle multiple tasks using a single architecture, 
leading to a, let's say, you can say generalized modeling when you see what are the, the downbacks on this, or if it performs equally or not. Um, of course, the task can be addressed, it's just rewrite inputs and puts without no need of extra parameters. That's why T5 is suitable for this tax. So in terms of concepts, uh, normally open natural language answers are a little more robust. They are more complete. They're not so narrow in terms of the responses uh, because sometimes specific tasks in NLP are very too specific, right? Uh, for example, here we see that we have some concepts in terms of these tasks. Multimodal, for example, span prediction. We had text one, text two, over a file event, and they want to identify what are the subjects. In the web, for example, man jumping. In the visual question answering, we want to find what is the man jumping over. And in this case, it's over fire event, right? Fire event is uh, the water supply for emergency, right? And visual grounding, we want to identify in the scene what is the object you are referring in the text? And they say hello fire granted, and you want to output this visual concept that relies to this object by itself. And uh, image text matching, you want to find if the image and the text we have some similar terms of matching. For example, in this context, uh, if it's a cat or a dog or laying around on the bed, we don't have uh, any of these objects, even a cat and a bed and the output should be false, right? Um, so many in terms of the, the work uh, is trained in specific data sets, uh, let's say constructed from some public, and then it's evaluated on seven downstream tasks, visual question answering, uh, natural language visual reasoning, uh, visual common sense reasoning, cocoa caption, generating captions, and multi trick that uh, is basically a data set that uh, evaluates uh, or tries to for to be used for models to translate uh, English to, to German. Um, let me just introduce a little bit the concept of uh, discriminative and generative. The word by itself is uh, explanatory, but of course, most of the times, discriminative models, they can only answer from a set of frequent candidates. This is, let's say, common, common sense. Um, and the modified model text generation is conditional on multiple inputs, text, image and text, and you're gonna see how this is done. Um, and the framework allows a little bit of uh, sharing knowledge among different tasks. Of course, this is possible because they have some degree of overlap. Uh, and perhaps uh, in terms of uh, a little bit more robust to have her case answer scenarios that is more robust to the, let's say, to non seen cases. I'm gonna skip just to, related works, because uh, there are many, and there are others works that I find also relevant. But the model of uh, overall in terms of discussion, it consists of visual transformers uh, in a multimodal conditional text generation based on T5 and BERT. BERT uh, is similar to, uh, to BERT with E, but um, in terms of the, the training is a little bit different uh, because uh, but I find that it hides each uh, single one tokens and uh, BERT hides with a single span, uh, span hiding. So basically we want to form the text to add the image region embeddings. You're gonna see what are the, what, what, how they are formed from, uh, from where they are obtained and how they gonna be merged on this. So here have you the prefix, for example, fire threatened. I uh, want to output uh, the, concept, the visual concept, the location, right? But uh, we want to also encode the visual embeddings. Um, and of course, this is the, sorry, the, the output. Uh, and here you see how this is done. Basically, the visual embeddings is, uh, they are obtained for a faster CCN, training of visual genome, um, of course, Faster CCN outputs the attributes and the classification of the object. And uh, each region is encoded as uh, um, a sum of uh, four types of features that is the draw of features, box coordinates, image IDs, and region IDs, uh, with the raw features and bounding box encoded with, by a linear layer, and the image IDs and regions encoded with the learning balance to be fused with the text. Um, 
And the image IDs are used to discriminate among different regions in the image. This is relevant, uh, even with multiple inputs given to the model. So just a little bit of contextualization on text embeddings. Uh, I'll say that uh, I'm not focused too much on this because it's, uh, let's say, for me, and for others, it's a little bit of general knowledge. But uh, for those who are not so aware of uh, text embeddings, basically you want to compute distances among words. For example, man, woman, um, queen, king are close. For example, other concepts are, are, are uh, uh, far away. Uh, there are many of them. That depends on the co context. This is uh, from Glove. There are others, uh, text embeddings, you can use many. In this case, the T5 is, uh, is trained on the colossal corpus. Uh, but these embedding parameters are shared among the encoder and decoder and the language head, right? With T5 adding positional bias to its share protection layer, that is uh, relevant. Uh, with this embedding sharing, enable to build correspondence among the text queries and the objects in the scene. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's uh, missing. The encoder decoder architecture, of course, is a stack of uh, and transformers blocks with all self attention, fully connected layers and residual connections, trying to resemble a multi level encoder, right? Uh, the particular is we train this to address uh, to, the model is trying to address the many tasks, um, but uh, with a single object, which is interesting. Uh, for example, uh, one concept versus another. One concept that they use uh, um, encoders, right? Image encoder and a language encoder, and you have a kind of matching loss, right? And then uh, the most recent, this is uh, not a work from this, but it's, let's say it's inspired from Hendrix that you use a multimodal transformer, and we put all the image and the text embeddings at the same layer and try to fuse this as a language model to have a joint encoder. Uh, and basically the, the joint encoder uh, takes the concatenation of visual embeddings as inputs, visual and text embeddings as inputs and outputs it's, up, it's joint uh, representation. Uh, of course, the encoder tries to iteratively generate the tokens and predict uh, the next one based on, the, on those that uh, appear. Uh, here we have, uh, let's say, kind of uh, the difference of the two concepts regarding single task and multiple task. For example, we have here n heads for n tasks. Uh, here we have a visual language transformer. You have the concatenator, but we have, for example, for each, in this case, multi level classification, we have a, a head, right? And then for classification, you have another head. Uh, in this case, using this kind of architecture, you do this fusing by the language model. So we don't specify specific a task. Uh, we try to address in a more generalized way, many tasks. Um, of course, this has some advantage. It models, it frees the, say, the design of new, new, new models and extra parameters to address a particular tasks. Uh, and since the text labels are formulated with the corresponding text, uh, enables different tasks to be performed with the same model. Um, so in terms of pretrainer, how things are done, this is just a brief uh, contextualization. For example, visual question answering and for expression comprehension, we want to, this is our task, for what is the mustache of made of, in this case it's bananas, and you want to localize a target region given an, an expression. For example, we have a hierarchical clustering, and you see, for example, the man, article, and subject are in the same level. But the verb running, you need to go a little step behind, and and um, in for all, of course for all the sentences. This is the hierarchical organization of the objects in the scene, or for this sentence. Uh, but this often is a little bit complex uh, because sometimes the number of objects and interactions are very high uh, and perhaps this graph is not so clean. Um, and of course, uh, the pre-training data, how authors constructed their training data. Um, they aggregate Microsoft uh, MS Cocoa and Visual Genome uh, in a single data set. 
uh, with the caption and using for the multimodal language modeling tasks by itself. And Cocoa Captions uh, use it through the image set matching to uh, learn the multimodal cross alignment, to learn how to align words. Uh, this, uh, let's say, states that uh, this data set contains uh, 9 million and a few image text parameters, pair, sorry, uh, in a 180K distinct image. Uh, so, uh, very interesting data set in terms of this construction. And you're going to see how this is done. Of course, multi language model, 50% of the masks tokens are replaced, contiguous text span and setting out tokens. This is a uh, common stuff for, um, for uh, 45. This is inspired also by Visual Bird. Uh, visual question answer, you want to generate answers in the original text format. Uh, matching, random sample another training image and give it to form a negative parts. And visual grounding, of course, you want to supply the model with the visual ground capabilities that say what is this object in the in the scene. Uh, of course, there is always a limitation uh, is that uh, this is dependent on the backgrounds. So basically, we were relying uh, here in this case, particular case in fast RCCN. Of course, if the object detector is not will not perform well, perhaps we're going to have misidentifications and perhaps we'll refer to other object that is being labeled as that particular class. So uh, let's say this is not the perfect world. Uh, and here you have, let's say, the kind of tasks where this is retrained and then the downstream tasks where the model is evaluated. For example, span prediction, we hide this and want to predict what are the, the spans, in this case, main jumping, right? Uh, we mask it in the noise, we denoise it, uh, on, we put noise and we want to denoise the text uh, and to identify the full text sentence. In this case, we hide it, man and jumping also. Uh, visual question answering, we want to see what color of the shirt uh, of the man, in this case is, is blue. Uh, text matching, is, if he's uh, jumping over the fire event, in this case is, is true, right? Visual one, fire event, I want to identify the concept, visual trace, concept trace, visual, and captioning, right? You want, for example, this object, but is the caption um, that describes, in this case, is yellow fire, right? Uh, as you see, many objectives train it. Uh, they have some degree of overlap, and this is, let's say, common, common um, easy to see. Uh, but, uh, some of them focus on object ID or location and other try to connect text to visual concepts. Uh, and then we try to evaluate uh, the downstream tasks in terms of the performance, right? Here I'll say the, the, the seven tasks uh, with five of them being discriminative and two others are generative. Generative basically want to generate tasks, right? For example, English to German is a generative task or generating a, a caption is also a generative task. Others are more discriminative, true or false, if it's this in this place, etc. As you see with the selected uh, say, uh, papers or uh, works, uh, there are very common, Alexa Bird, Visual Bird, etc. Oscar also. The, the two approaches, um, uh, just to focus, uh, the author gives more importance to the Visual T5, but he also uh, in a, uh, use it, uh, BERT. BERT is a little bit variation of, uh, of BERT with it. But uh, we see that the performance is uh, we compare it with uh, other, other works it is um, very competitive. Uh, just to rephrase or uh, to emphasize that uh, this model is addressing a single model, single objective, addressing all these tasks, uh, while the others uh, are not addressing. For example, Alex and BERT only refers to visual question answering and natural language visual reasoning and doesn't uh, address these kind of tasks. Um, so in terms of numbers, very competitive results in terms of comparison with others. Uh, and also we need to refer to pre-train number of image, right? And the NTK compared with some others that are a little bit more, perform a little bit better, but uh, it's an, in an order of uh, magnitude almost uh, six, seven times. Uh, 
Uh, six? No, more than that. Um, so in terms of visual questioning, uh, of course, the discriminative models, they present always a good strong performance, but uh, they often don't generalize too well to real world scenarios. Um, we have here some, let's say, in domain, in terms of, we rephrase, make questions in the domain of the text and the vision in the, in the, the image and out of the domain you do something that is complete opposite what is in, in the image and the text uh, to see if, if you can respond correctly, for example, if it's an object here, no. Um, so also natural language visual reasoning to basically evaluate this in three configurations, triplet, pair, and uh, pair by them, basically it's the models and multi-head attention. Basically this uh, tries to determine or uh, identify if two statements about uh, um, a natural language statement is true about two image. If, uh, so this image has the same objects, it's the same image, et cetera. Uh, this enables to disembark weight uh, regions on, in between two images and the model has to generate true and false. Um, interesting results, of course, it didn't achieve the best performance, 74, but we need to base 77, but anyway, not so bad, bad result. So in common sense reasoning, um, the model achieved a good performance. Um, in terms of um, the, the question, for example, vision question reasoning, we do a question and answer and I want to uh, reasoning. We will do a question and we want to answer any reasoning about it, question and answer, question and answer and want the reasoning, and etc. Of course, in each of the sets, in this case, test, validation, validation, uh, in that. and the choices are the yeah, highest score is selected, of course. Um, then uh, the image captioning in terms of a uh, generative task, uh, the model for uh, visual grounding will generate the let's say the, the text or the caption that uh, describes the, this particular object. Uh, it makes use also pre-training language and the object text, of course, and the text are used for fine tuning. But uh, of course, they didn't achieve a excellent performance in the blue score, Oscar is a little bit better in this, but the results are not so far. Um, of course, perhaps tag augmentation can boost a little bit the performance on this. And uh, multimodal translation, as I say, English to to uh, to German, uh, a generative task, basically compared with two works. The, those are selected. There are others, but uh, this, uh, let's say, emphasizes the fact that the T5 models uh, are good at generating text um, when compared with other baselines, even when they use a stronger argumentation. Um, as we see here, two models, they are competitive. Uh, so in terms of uh, some conclusions, and we have here a small demo uh, that is in the paper. I also have one that my own that is fine-tuned for other tasks. Um, the, the author proposes uh, two model variations, T5 and BERT, to tackle this problem of vision and language means by text generation objectives. Uh, it, it achieved comparable results when compared with the state-of-the-art visual language text uh, in a very diverse set of tasks. No particular and graphic architecture objective for each of these tasks. Uh, generative approach, as I say, is very su suitable for open-ended visual question, is more rich. Uh, and uh, all the different tasks were handled uh, with a single set of parameters without retraining for a single task. This is, let's say, the kind of message I say, uh, we have an interesting model that is able to address uh, many different tasks uh, and achieving good performance. Okay, we we'll just uh, change here to, to other tab. Uh, let me just, I need to minimize the other because and now I need to find what of them. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, 
if you have the paper, you can see it. Uh, I have a own version on this, but uh, let me see if I can catch the screen again. Okay, on this. I think it's this one. Yeah, you see, right? You have the, the, the let's say, the, the demo or the notebooks. I was interested in some kind of notebook demonstrating the capabilities of the models. Uh, here is a little bit uh, different. They don't, it's just a plate version because they is faster RCCN, but it's based on a repository from Eugen's face, Alex and Bert. Uh, I say that is different. They, they catch uh, different features features from this, these models. Uh, of course, it clones the, the repository and so on and so on, downloads the words and all the backgrounds. Uh, then we have, uh, of course, the, the weights, right? Uh, and uh, their model architecture and the weights. And it depends and want to do an inference right on this, right? Uh, then uh, let's say you can play with it on this, just for example, this is the URL when the image is can is being loaded. Uh, you can put any URL that it ends with a job, JPEG because the format of the image uh, got its handling. Uh, here we have, uh, let's say, the the generalized, the pre-trained RCCNs and so on. And you want to use a lot of puts to be in JPEG format. Um, then we construct uh, here the, let's say, the query uh, stuff to to show us uh, the, the object of the fast RCCN, for example, for this image in particular. You see here you have the plot of all the objects in relation in, in probabilities uh, with this, and then we want to load the tokenizer and do some questions. For example, what is the man doing? What is the color of clue clothing on the man wears? For example, in this in this particular, what is the color of doors? Of course, we can change these questions. Uh, and the answers are here. What the man is doing, it's writing. Yeah, we learned the concept of the action. Uh, what the man is wears, we identify the man and it's what is the wearing because of the, the NLP process identifies the clothes and the visual concept gives the color. Uh, and what is the color of the horse in this particular case is, is black, right? Many questions can be done, other image, uh, just to show how things are connected uh, and wait, there are others to connect this. Uh, but uh, that's why I, I, say I kind of see like this paper. I didn't discuss too much in transforming because I think it's more relevant to have, uh, let's say, a narrow discussion only on transformers, perhaps with a demo or notebooks, explain it step by step. So I think. Uh, this is what I have, present, uh, I have to present in this kind of small journal club. And for now, I'm kind of open to questions or suggestions. Okay. Okay, all here. <laughs>